Hey, what is up everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to talk about my Viscount Aerospace GP. Um, it's a British bike that I picked up a few years ago. I was, had been riding my dad's Motobacon a lot, but I wanted something a little lighter and a little more racy than that bike. Uh, my friend Woody sent me an ad from Craigslist and this was listed for 75 bucks. Um, I did a little research and it seemed like it would be a decent bike. So I messaged the guy, he said the bike was fully rideable in the condition it was in. And so I asked him where he was. He said he was in Cuyahoga Falls. I said, oh, so am I, so whereabouts are you? And he said, uh, not far off State Road on Chestnut. And I was like, well, I live on the corner of Chestnut and State, so about an hour later, I found myself walking down there, um, gave him 75 bucks and took the bike home. It was pretty dirty. Um, you could tell he had tuned it up and it rode kind of fine, but all the cables were just zip tied on. It had some, you know, pretty ugly bar tape. The tires were probably pretty close to original. They were fairly, um, fairly dry rotted and stuff like that, but it did ride and it was in decent shape. So I, you know, just cleaned it up really, really good. And I rode it that summer pretty much as my number one bike. I later picked up the Peugeot. And after I started to ride that, I decided a good thing to do with this one would be to really learn how to work on a bike. So I stripped it completely down to the frame and I built it all back up. So through the process of rebuilding this bike and doing the research to rebuild it, there are a number of kind of unique characteristics or features that started to notice. Um, one is that um, Viscount used originally parts that were all their own. So instead of buying a group set from someone else, they were all branded Viscount or made for them or made in their factory. The company was originally called Lambert. This actually has, and they did the same thing. Everything was branded Lambert. This actually has the Lambert levers on it still, which is kind of interesting. But mine being a little later, the drivetrain has been shifted, um, shifted to a Shimano. But other than that, it does have the Viscount branded hubs, which are sealed bearing high flange hubs, which is, I believe, kind of unique for the time. And the quick releases and everything are branded Viscount. The stem is branded Viscount. The bars are not branded. Um, the tubing is, you know, kind of its big selling point. It's the aerospace tubing. It was made in Britain and it was supposedly made by an aerospace company, thus the name. It's chromoly straight gauge. It's supposed to be pretty nice. It is not Reynolds or Columbus, which is kind of unique. So it's kind of the tubing kind of made the whole Lambert Viscount thing. The bottom bracket was super unique when I took it apart. It's not threaded, it's just two cartridge bearings pushed in. And then there's an axle pushed through those and then a couple clip rings that go on either side that keeps it from sliding back and forth. Um, when I took those apart, I had never seen anything like that and I actually went to a bearing shop in Akron and they were able to put a caliper on it and get me the right bearings for the bike. Uh, I think the most distinctive feature visually is this big chain ring. Nothing else really looks like this one. It's a piece of aluminum with these circles drilled out of it. I really love it. And the cranks and everything are all supposed to be in Viscount Lambert cranks. Um, another unique feature that is the big elephant in the room that everyone knows these bikes for is this aluminum fork that is cast aluminum to get the weight down, also known as the death fork. So it got the name the death fork because the early version of aluminum was not attached very well to the steel steerer. And with a couple pins going through, they were known to break. I guess the estimate is that 1% of them were breaking. So not crazy, but if you're one of the one out of 100 people that went over your bars, you weren't gonna be happy. They made a second version where they changed the way the pins were and it was supposed to be a little better but not good enough. And then they came out with a third version where they put steel all the way through and then put the brake assembly through it. And that's what this version is. You could tell by pulling off your wheel and putting a magnet there and if it sticks, you have the third version. Supposedly these are safe. I'm comfortable riding it. I've ridden it pretty hard. It's, you know, Sheldon Brown says, don't ride any of the aluminum fork bikes. Other people say the third version is fine. Other people still go for chill rides on their earlier versions. I wouldn't ride one of the earlier versions, but that's just me. Um, the, the last owner of Viscount was Yamaha and they recalled every bike with an aluminum fork. The reputation was really bad as say death fork. And so they replaced them all with, I don't know how you pronounce it because I've never heard it said out loud, Tang Steel, T-A-N-G-E. Um, so most of the Viscounts and Lamberts out there now have a chrome looking fork. So this one is unique that it's the aluminum fork and 
the steel chrome frame, chrome alley frame. One other thing is I replaced the saddle. It was pretty beat up and uncomfortable. Um, I put this Brooks saddle on it. The thing, you know, I put the cloth bar tape to give it back a vintage look and put these red cable housings, which I thought were cool and found some clips um, on Velo Orange that fit the bike, you know, to give it more of its original look. That's how it would have been, you know, originally. Um, I did clean it up and I did clear coat it, but I didn't go nuts. I left the original decals. They, someone is, does sell the decals online, but they cost more than I paid for the bike. Now, being that there are no brazons on this frame, I used this little try thing, which is a little goofy, but whoops, that needs to be tightened, uh, to carry water bottles with me when I ride it. But yeah, it's a fun, fast bike to ride. So my goal had been to record the rest of this video out here on the road, but it is so windy, I think I'm gonna take it back to the studio instead. You won't be able to even hear anything. So yeah, I am back from my ride, uh, and boy was it a windy one. That headwind on the way back was absolutely brutal. I did not expect that. Um, anyways though, yeah, getting back on this bike, um, it's amazing how slammed I have it. I don't think I have any of my other bikes that slammed, the drop from the seat to the bars. It almost feels like being on the tops on this bike is like being on the drops on most of my other bikes. It just feels light and fast, and I always liked it for that reason. I'm sure if you ride modern, you know, top of the line carbon bikes, this feels like a boat anchor, but I don't. So for me, this feels like a very quick light bike. It was a fun, fun ride. And I remember why I liked riding this bike and why I liked riding it really fast. And yeah, these huge drops when you're down in them, I was wearing my book peg with my camera gear and it almost felt like it could come up over my head if I were to hit a bump. It's just that they're that low. It's almost like a, um, you know, probably a 70s time trial position. A couple more thoughts just on the death fork real quick. I just want to say that I don't, Everyone needs to make the um, decision for themselves what they want to ride with anything in life. There's a risk, you know, and any vintage bike can have any number of problems. You know, there's certain other bikes that have stem problems and, you know, all kinds of things. So I'm not recommending you ride this. I feel comfortable with the third generation fork. Like I said, I wouldn't feel comfortable with the first two, but, you know, other people say don't ride them at all. It's up to you to assess the risk that you're willing to take on any vintage bike. You know, there's bikes that come into the bike shop I hang out with that are modern, and the owner there has showed me stuff where he can't believe they were built up like this by someone who didn't know what they were doing. I hate it when I see in this community someone calling someone a wimp for not riding these, or some, you know, it's just, that's ridiculous to me. And I also think not having any nuance that they did change it over time and ignoring all that and everyone like, don't touch a bike with a death fork can be overblown too. So it goes both ways, do what's right for you. So I've touched a little bit on the history of these bikes, but so they was started in 1972 under the name Lambert. And I guess they say it was one of the sons of the Marriott empire that actually started the company, but started it in England for some reason. But so Lambert was, the idea was that they were gonna sell lightweight bikes cheaper than everybody else. So you could get a light bike for a reasonable amount of money. And the way they did that was by manufacturing everything themselves or having everything manufactured for them with their name. They even originally made their derailleurs themselves. Uh, the early bikes, the early Lamberts were lugged frames with the aerospace lightweight tubing, but then they switched to the fillet braze style frames that this one currently is now. Uh, they got bought by an older cycling company called Trusty in 74, 75, and that's when they started making bikes under the Viscount name, and it seems like they slowly switched them over. Like I mentioned, this bike actually has Lambert levers on them. Then in 1978, they were bought by the Yamaha Motorcycle Company. Over time, Yamaha started using more of the off-the-shelf parts, you know, Shimano derailleurs, Suntour derailleurs, and, you know, more common brakes, like this one actually does have you know, off the shelf brakes until the point where they actually started making the frames in Taiwan and Japan and then even selling much cheaper models than Viscount or Lambert ever had. And then by 1982, it seems that the brand had completely disappeared. I guess that pretty much everybody who owned the bike company lost money, but the bikes were really well reviewed, especially in the American market. So they've kind of become this niche little interesting piece of cycling history from the bike boom years.